Hi guys, welcome back to another video and today I'll be taking a look at Logitech's new G Cloud handheld gaming device which allows you to do cloud gaming with the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, Nvidia GeForce Now and Steam Link together with allowing you to do remote play on both the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S. Details are in the description below including purchasing links so I'll be taking a closer look at the spec, the performance when gaming, to give you my overall thoughts, highlighting any pros and cons, to give you a better idea if it's worth getting or not. But before I begin, if you're new to your channel, hope you can support me by subscribing and hitting the bell icon to get notified of my next release. And drop me a comment below if you had any questions. First, let's take a quick look at what you get inside the box. You get the Logitech G Cloud, then underneath that, there's a small box, and inside you get some documentation, a USB-A to USB-C charging cable, and a power brick. Taking a closer look at the G Cloud, it comes with a removable screen protector. The case is made from strong plastic all the way round, and looks pretty nice, weighing in at just 463 grams. It's 25.6 centimeters long and has a width of 11.7 centimeters and a depth of 3.2 centimeters. It's white all over with a yellow accent coloring underneath the analog sticks on the Logitech G button and underneath the on off switch. The top of the analog sticks are black together with the top area of the device. On the back, you've got the Logitech G logo in glossy white with the device being pretty thin and the sides being much thicker. You've got a texture on the grips, which give a more ergonomic design, helping to grip and cup around your hands more easily. On the front, you have the controls. So on the left at the top, you have a select button, which has a clicky feel to it. Then you have your left analog stick, which has a nice design and some good amount of range with a nice grippy feel to it. Plus you can click down for your L3 and R3 for the one on the right. Moving down, you have the D-pad, which sticks out a little bit on each of the edges with the travel on it being low with a small pivot. On the bottom, you have the G button, which works as your back button. Over to the right, you have your start button. And similar to the Xbox controller, you have the A, B, X and Y buttons with a similar feel as the D-pad, which feels pretty good. Then you have your right analog stick, which feels the same as the left one. And on the bottom, you have your home button. On the top, you have your L2 and R2 triggers together with your R1 and R1 bumpers, which feel good and work well, but I would have liked the triggers to be a bit deeper and stick out a little bit more, similar to what you have on the controllers to give more of a range. Along the top, you have your volume toggle, a slider to turn the device on and off, and a micro USB card slot. Along the bottom, you have your speakers, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a type C port for charging. The device runs an Android operating system. So it's essentially an Android tablet. So setup is pretty straightforward. Power on the device from the on off switch at the top, which will then go through the setup process. The first time you use it, hit the start button, which will then go through the setup wizard. And eventually you get to a point where you have to select between the two modes of operation. So tablet or handheld mode. And it recommends using the handheld mode as this is the gamer mode. The whole process takes no longer than five minutes so you're up and running pretty quickly. The device runs Android 11 and has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 720G octa-core CPU which is not new as it's been around since 2020 with 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage but you can add more storage as it has a micro SD card expansion slot. It has an IPS LCD touchscreen with a 1080p resolution and a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It has a glossy finish with a 0.6 millimeter bezel at the top and bottom and a 0.9 millimeter bezel on the left and right. Screen wise it measures in at 7 inches diagonally and feels quite good size wise but with it being glossy it does attract dust and smudges on the screen but as it's quite a bright display it's not that noticeable until the display's turned off. The picture quality is really sharp with vibrant colours and it has a 60 hertz refresh rate with the brightness levels being 450 nits. Starting up the device you're presented with the custom game launcher. Performance on the device feels good and responsive with the custom launcher only allowing you to run one app at a time. And this I guess is to ensure the device doesn't get overloaded and slow down due to it having just four gigs of RAM. In the handheld mode, all notifications are blocked. So if you had your email set up on the device, you won't get any pop-ups appearing to distract you, which is pretty good. So the focus is purely on gaming. Gaming on here is pretty cool with the cloud-based games. Performance is good without having to install the games locally if you only having to wait a short amount of time to launch a game. But the key thing here is with cloud-based gaming, you do need a good internet connection. Otherwise games will seem laggy, but with a good connection, 
the experience is excellent. At 1080p with a 60 hertz refresh rate, the resolution is more than sufficient to get a good gaming experience. I've been using this for the past week now and played a number of different games. The advantage here is if you gamed on a console in your living room using your TV, this frees up your TV. Or if you even gamed in a separate room, this just makes things more sociable so you're not away from everyone else in your home. And the cool thing here is that you can do local streaming and this is where you can leave your PC or console on and stream to gcloud to game on. And this allows your family to watch a movie and surf the web separately but still be in the same room as you while you're gaming. I wouldn't say it would replace having a console or a PC but it just complements it and frees up your mobile which is pretty handy especially if you're traveling so you can use it just for entertainment purposes. And if you're wondering about battery life well that's awesome as you're easily able to get 12 hours from it. Gaming wise it's not a Steam Deck competitor and it's worth noting that this device is aimed at the streaming market so you'll need an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscription to use the Xbox Cloud or an Nvidia GeForce Now account. Or you could even remote play from your PlayStation, Xbox or even your PC with Steam Link. But with any of these options you'll need a fast internet connection when you're out and about. Now as it has an Android operating system you're able to install anything from the Google Play Store and run it locally. But power is limited so it may struggle with more performance intensive games. So for example playing Fortnite locally did struggle slightly at times with it getting laggy. Now flipping over to tablet mode you can see the interface change to what you'd see on an Android tablet and in this mode you're able to multitask so you can launch multiple applications and flip between them without needing to close anything. You have the ability to connect a wired headset or pair up some Bluetooth earbuds as it supports Bluetooth 5.1. But it does have two stereo speakers and the sound quality from there is pretty good. They're actually positioned underneath to avoid them being covered. And to give you an idea of the sound quality, have a listen to this. With an Android operating system, you're not limited to just using it for gaming. You can install any social media apps you have on there, or you could use it to stream movies and really use it as an all-round entertainment device. So in summary, Logitech have done pretty well with their first handheld cloud-based gaming device, letting you play on the go, freeing up your mobile with a good screen size and controls comfortably positioned when gaming. And as it has Android, you can install any of the apps available in the Google Play Store, giving you that flexibility to use it for more than just gaming. So you could stream your movies from it or even install and play games locally. Battery life wise, you can easily get around 12 hours from it, which is phenomenal. And the advantage of having a device like this is you don't need to get a PC or console as it's primarily based around cloud based gaming. I can see the advantage of a device like this as it frees up your mobile so you're not constantly running out of battery. And while you're in the middle of gaming sessions, you won't get any notifications coming through to you so you can focus on your game. And even when you're at home, it allows you to free up your TV. I wouldn't say it will replace having a console or PC, but it nicely complements it to give you a bit more flexibility. Negatives wise, when cloud gaming, you're dependent on having a good internet connection. Otherwise, you'll get some lagging. It's a shame the resolution isn't 4K to give a more sharper image, but obviously this would require more bandwidth and this is more than likely why they've gone for a 1080p display. Spec wise it's not a high end device so if you've got a performance intensive game installed locally it may struggle but it should be fine with less intensive games. And price wise it's not cheap coming in at just under £330 or just under $350 and for this price it would have been nice if it came with a hard carry case. So there you have it, you come to the end of another video and I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. And for those of you who got to the end of the video, please leave a comment with the words G Cloud as it's nice to see who got to the end of my video and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. You can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to be notified of my next release. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.